Oh, great search brought to you by DigiKey and Peru. Thanks, DigiKey. Every single link leader you use the power of engineering help you. Yes, you find the things on DigiKey.com. What are you looking for this week? Okay. Um, this week, I've been working a lot on my ESP32 C6 Feather, and I realized uh, maybe other people want to do stuff with the C6 uh, because it's got good support in um, the Espresso Board Support Package 3, which is in release candidate one coming out soon. Uh, so let's go to the computer and I'll show this off. Uh, so one, uh, sign up if you want the ESP32 C6 Feather. It'll also be available at DigiKey, uh, guaranteed. So, um, but if you sign up, you'll get notified and then you can pick it up from DigiKey as well. Um, I don't think they do coming soon as much. So um, the cool thing about the C6 is it's got uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Zigbee, and it comes in a couple different packages. So I thought we would check them out. Um, so first off, you can always search for your favorite espressive chip. If you want the exact match, um, you're going to end up with this. But this is like, watch out. You probably actually don't want this particular chip. So this chip is the basic C6 version, uh, not the FH4 subversion. So this version does have like all of the pins. Let me see if I can show the pin out. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have as many pins as like the S3, but it does have a you know significant number of pins. It's kind of uh, similar to the C3 in like pinout and size. Um, crystals and uh, lots of GPIO, and it exposes the pins for the um, um, SPI, sorry, the QSPI flash that you need to actually run firmware. So um, one thing to note is the ESP32 but all of them, you know, unlike m many microcontrollers you may be used to, like the SAMD or the Atmegas or whatever, but also like the RP2040, do not have internal firm, uh, firmware flash space. So to actually load code, you need an external chip. Normally, you would wire this up. Let's see. They sometimes have a uh, schematic showing the wiring. But maybe not. Okay, they don't actually have it here. Um, sorry, to uh, you would normally have to wire up the external QSPI flash to this chip if you wanted to use it, because again, it doesn't have internal memory. However, they do have a version of this chip. If you look for the FH series, it's not that much more expensive. It's like whatever, 20, 30 cents more expensive, but it does have, four megabytes of QSPI flash already inside the chip, like bonded in so that all the pins are like connected together. Those pins are still exposed if you like wanted to, I don't know, like look at them, but you couldn't actually use them as GPIO. So watch out for that. Like they're, you have to remember which ones they are so that you don't accidentally try to connect a peripheral to them. Um, that isn't like related to the, the internal QSPI memory. However, if you don't want to do the antenna stuff, you can also get um, the ESP32 C6 in a couple different versions with antenna. So this is the transceiver ICs is just the raw chips. And like, you know, you'll see here, um, they do say like this one has memory, this one doesn't. Uh, you know, it says here like it has 30 GPIO, but remember you're going to use a bunch of those GPIO for flash memory. So you don't, like you don't actually have that many GPIO um because they're going to be taken so that's why the, not a lot of people buy the bare ones unless you happen to want like a lot of flash memory like more than four megabytes in which case you would wire it up yourself but what is better to do is to get the modules which i personally like so the module that i'm using here is the mini style and it's very compact but it doesn't have as many gpio as um, I don't think they mentioned the number of GPIO. It doesn't have as many GPIO as the, um, the Waroom version. So there's two versions, the Waroom and the Mini. And if you look at the product selector, which, uh, under, if you go to like products test, Expressive.com. This is what I kind of use because for example, I was like, oh, is there a version with PSRAM? They'll give you a list of every uh product available so let's say you want like the c6 series so they'll you know my screen is a little compact 
So, can, I, can't, I can't get rid of this. Um, but they can show you, all right, so if you look down here, they have the room one, room one U, another room one, but this one with four, sorry, these have four megabytes, these have eight megabytes. They also have a version, eight megabytes U, U means um, external antenna. Oh, here it expanded. There's also a version with 16 megabytes, which is like a lot. And then the mini, and you notice the mini has one less GPIO. The mini is also only available with four megabytes of flash. But one thing you notice is they all have the same amount of SRAM, 512K, ROM, which is the boot ROM. You don't actually get to use that for anything. So like ignore that. It's like not for your use. And none of them have PS RAM. So this chip is not designed for use with PS RAM. Like you're not going to use it with um, external, like large two megabyte RAM chip that you would use for uh, storing data. It's meant to be low cost. To be honest, um, you know, I personally like the mini, but the War Room is also good and all are, are stocked. Um, the mini is also a little bit less expensive. And so, you know, I, you know, I kind of prefer that a little bit too. So let's just, we just want like the ones from Espressif. And then let's say we want, we want with uh, antenna and you can get, I'll show you UFL. So on the um, Waroom 1U, it has, it's smaller. So they're, they're very compact, but you have to connect an external antenna. And here's like a trick. The other ones, the mini are probably not UFL. I believe they're WFL. Let's take a look at the data sheet real fast because I'm like pretty sure. And then there's the H4 and the N4. And I believe that is, yeah, that's a temperature. So N or H4 at the end means how much flash memory is included. And if you see H, it means high temperature. It's good up to 105 uh, C operating, whereas the N is normal temperature. It's up to 85 C. I personally am fine with 85 C. Um, antenna, I believe, like I said, this is WFL. Yeah. It's actually a WFL antenna, not a UFL antenna. And that totally tripped me up. So watch out for that. But again, you know, I don't often, sometimes I make variants of the boards with WFL, but let's go for the PCB trace and see what's available. Um, so for the PCB trace, yeah, you're going to get the rooms and a, and a UFL with eight. But you know, like I said, I really like the mini and four. Uh, and it's like super cheap, two bucks and 50 cents. Uh, for 250, you get Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and 2.4 gigahertz Zigbee uh, with like, thread and matter support. And what's cool is, is that there's only one antenna and it actually like shares them. So you can actually have like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and Zigbee running and it will like correctly jump between protocols for you. So you don't have to do any like funky antenna stuff. So this is, uh, some of you were asking me what chip I used on that feather. This is the module and this is my pick for the great search. They have lots in stock. That's the great search.